you said Joe Biden was a good guy. Um, was that an endorsement? <laughs> uh, I think, you know, the thing you know about Bernie Sanders is there's no um, uh, there's no uh, implication or subtlety. So I think when he said Joe Biden is a good guy, he meant that Joe Biden is a good guy. OK. And when he when he wants to talk about Joe Biden's campaign, you will know that he's talking about Joe Biden's campaign. OK, so there was no explicit endorsement uh, given, which is not, you know, uh, we didn't hear one from Elizabeth Warren. I think he she also said he was a good guy. Um, uh, yeah, I, so, think t- I think today Bernie wanted to talk to his supporters and to us as staff about what happened with the campaign and, and the next steps. And I think, you know, how how uh, how we go about uh, what he sees as the next steps or next steps. I, I think today was a today's a day for the supporters. I also noticed uh, Dave Weigel um, uh, tweeted out that Sanders had not um, uh, garnered 25 percent of the delegates at this point, which would not give him uh, the um, uh, leverage in regards with uh, rules committees. And uh, then I noticed that uh, uh, that Sanders said he's going to stay on the ballot in these states to continue to get delegates. Is that what the campaign is hoping to get uh, to 25 percent? Yeah, I, I don't. Um, you know, I think that we'll, there'll be time to talk about that. I will say that I think that that there's no way that Bernie's voice is going to be absent in the conversation when it comes to the rules or when it comes to the future of the Democratic Party. Um, you know, there are too many people. You know, I I think that he has brought so many people into the Democratic Party into the system of even engaging in presidential politics that. Um, you know, I think we carry that responsibility, and I, I don't think he's. I don't think his voice is going to go silent. Um. What, so what happens? What do I mean? Would you does has the campaign talked about like you know you have all these resources, uh, the in, in the form of still I imagine tremendous amount of cash, uh, and uh, or a decent amount of cash, um, and also a an enormous um, uh, email list uh, and all that that uh, implies. Uh, the, the ability to raise money for other candidates, the ability to organize. I mean, uh, the Sanders campaign has been um, uh, noted in particularly this this time around that much of its resources, completely uh, unique to a political campaign, were um, deployed in helping organizing strikes, organizing labor movements, uh, in a way that we haven't really seen before. And at one point, uh, raising a couple million dollars for uh, to deal with this, with uh, uh, helping people during this uh, pandemic. Do you have a sense of what those plans are going to be going forward? Well, I, I have to give the sort of unsatisfying answer of saying that I can't break any news uh, yet and get ahead of um, any any Click. conversations. Bernie, <laughs> that Bernie's going to make. Um, you know, I will say that I don't think it's going to change that, um, you know, one of the <laughs> just sort of my own personal experiences every day in the campaign, you know, we would have, we would have email traffic about, okay, well, this local group is organizing about this issue. Um, you know, can we support it? How do we support it? And, you know, it was something that was extraordinarily rewarding and continues to be even after um, even after I made the announcements, I'm still getting email saying, hey, can we get this tweet up to support these workers in this place that are looking for um, their employer to treat them fairly and give them time off because they're feeling sick and get the, um, the supplies they need. Um, so I, look, I think that, I, of course, I think that, he, you know, Bernie was on, has, been, has walked more picket lines than any other presidential can, candidate in history. And I think that his commitment to making sure that, you know, his theory of change has always been that in order to enact the, the the things that he wants enacted as president, that it was necessarily important that these movements, that these labor unions, that these grassroots movements, that these um, these immigration movements, that it, it, all these things got more powerful. The more powerful they got, the more likely it would be that um, that Bernie's um, agenda would be enacted. And I and I think that's still true. You know, I think that the part of the I think the benefit of Bernie's theory of power is that is still true now that he's no longer running. 
right? Right. It is still the case that the more powerful these movements get, these grassroots movements, the more likely it is that Bernie's agenda will be carried out. So I, I don't think there's going to be any change in terms of making sure that these movements grow um, and 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 do the work. I I, I just uh, Bernie's voice is always going to be there. Our voice is always going to be um, a part of that. And and you know I think everything from endorsing local candidates to um, uh, to, to, to building, to building advocacy, um, across the country, I think is important. And I think frankly, that what we've seen in the last two years is, you know, grassroots advocacy has become more grassroots. And, you know, we've, you know, we had a lot of sort of traditional, what, you know, 10 years ago would have been grassroots organizations, you know, having split from establishment DC politics. And now I think that's continued in sort of, it was your old, I think it was your old, uh, um, it was your old uh, Sundance Film Festival analogy, right? It's that, you know, it's the, when the sort of the alternative becomes more mainstream, then you, then another alternative breaks off. And I think that you're seeing, um, uh, you know, especially I think Bernie was most inspired, or at least very surprised, inspired by some of the, um, the groups when he met, you know, uh, kids who were like part of the Sunrise Movement, um, the immigration, the immigration groups, these kids who are DACA recipients who are afraid their parents, they would come home and their parents would be deported. Um, the, um, you know, uh, kids from March for Our Lives, you know, there are the groups that are much closer to the pain than any, than grassroots organizing has been in the last 10 years, right? right. It, you know, they've, and so I think that, um, that Bernie's focus is going to, is going to be with, with, um, with those groups for a long time. Uh, you, you you mentioned you know uh, getting a, a tweet up to uh, support uh, you know uh, an action that's happening around the country. What's going to happen to uh, the staff? I mean, it's been suggested that um, that 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 if this if if Bernie's going to continue on with these organizations, that they're uh, that the the campaign may mutate into something that is staffed. Obviously. A lot of people have lost their jobs and uh, there's not a lot of opportunities for people out there. Have you guys given any consideration to what's going to happen with the apparatus that you've built? Uh, well, thankfully, um, Michael Bloomberg has committed to paying us throughout the November election. So we feel very comfortable that we'll be able to continue our work uh, on his dime. Um, those are those are announcements that will come from Bernie um, in, the, in the coming days. I know that there's so many on the staff that want to keep the state being involved and it's look it's really hard right now to be a, a field organizer right um and so i think part of it is you know not just thinking about what happens next is how what happens next happens right because there's just not a model for what's going on right now right um all right well uh josh um you know, uh, I, I wish we were having this conversation about different things at, at this at this stage. Um, and uh, I, I guess, um, you know, maybe over, over the next week or two, we get a better sense of, uh, you know, what the next steps are. We can uh, we can we can uh, we can reconvene. But uh, I just from my perspective, I just want to, you know, um, uh, thank you and the campaign and uh, uh, and Bernie Sanders, the conversations that we can have on the show now that where, you know, um, uh, where I find myself, there are people who are, you know, have articulated, um, uh, ideas to the, I guess, to the left of, of what I'm presenting is something that, uh, was a, a dream, uh, 10, 12 years ago, even, you know, probably seven years ago, frankly, eight years ago, um, 10 years ago. So, uh, but, uh, I think, you know, uh, Bernie has brought into the mainstream, a lot of ideas that were completely fringe, um, maybe in some respects didn't even exist and has inspired, uh, people who I think, you know, at the very least, uh, my kids are going to be, you know, voting for, and that's really in many respects, you know, uh, why I'm here, but, uh, thank you, Josh. I don't yeah, know anything else you. You want to add? Yeah, and if I was going to say, if to say one thing to, to folks, um, you know, because I'm sort of struggling with this myself because we're all stuck at home and thinking about, you know, it's very easy right now to um, obsessively run through counterfactual scenarios in our head um, about uh, what could have been, um, you know, whether Bernie made the right choice or not. And I, my, I guess my advice for the sake of everyone's sort of peace of mind and sanity is to just today be thankful for you know, the, what, what we're, 
what we're able to talk about now, like you said, what we accomplished. Um, I think it's, I think it's a lot. And I think it's a lot to be thankful for. And I think people should, you know, and I, and I, I am comforted by the fact that um, I, you know, Bernie was such a, uh, was able, I found it so, uh, it was so easy to work for Bernie, especially in the last month, because, you know, despite what was going on with the primary, you know, there's not really two Bernies. So um, his focus uh, was so immediately on the people who were the most vulnerable people who were affected by the coronavirus pandemic. You know, I can't tell you the number of conversations we've been in where, you know, the exercise is to just keep thinking through, okay, you're, um, you've lost your job, you have a kid, what bills do you have to pay? In what order do you have to pay them? How do you get food to people? I, I mean, He's been so laser focused on that experience for that that people are having right now. It has been an e- you know it's it's helped me not think about myself and not to sort of wallow in our own sort of political situation. Um, that he has really sort of helped show me um, that right now we have to think about what we can do for other people. And um, you know I, I think if if people want to sort of honor what we've done, um, it's to do that. Is to think about how you can help help other people today. Josh Orton, Policy Director, Senior Advisor to uh, Senator Bernie Sanders. Thanks so much for your time today. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Sam. All right. Bye, Josh. Bye-bye. Uh, Michael, uh, we bring uh, Michael Brooks on. So uh, let, let's let's talk a little bit about this. We're, uh, no, uh, uh, Nomi is going to join us in the uh, later in the program. We'll have Jamie. Uh, we'll hop on. Um, I don't know if we can handle all the Zoom. I I also want to find out what Josh did. All the Zoom. He, I want to find out what Josh did when he changed something and it all of a sudden it worked uh, because that we need some of that around here. But um, uh, obviously, you know, it's not a huge surprise, uh, but um, and I know there's going to be some people who say like, why didn't he do it before Wisconsin? People should remember that the vote yesterday, we all look at it outside of Wisconsin as a primary election. But uh, as we spoke to John Nichols the other day, there were dozens, at least, if not more, mayoral elections, like general elections that were happening. And the Supreme Court one, which was the big one. Bernie Sanders could have said, don't, um, uh, don't come out and vote. And then, uh, you know, the the fate of that Supreme Court seat in Wisconsin would have definitely been sealed. And, um, you know, uh, once the, the the Republicans insisted upon having that election, he did, uh, we should say beforehand, say that he thought that there should not be a uh, an election on that day. The whole thing should be punted. But all right. So putting right. that aside, um, wh- what's your first reactions, Michael? I mean, the first reaction is obviously, uh, I, I guess personally, I was pretty prepared for this. I thought this was clearly coming. Um, I wanted to advocate uh, that he continue in the race. I thought there was some real value, particularly in the first couple of weeks, the way he was mobilizing around Corona. Uh, frankly, I think in the in, in the first couple of weeks after it dropped, I think in the last two weeks, I would have liked to have seen and, you know, Josh asked us not to second guess, so I'll try not to do much of that. But I I would have liked to seen some specific mobilization against the bailout. I think we talked about that. I think there was valid criticism there. Um, and I think now, uh, you know, I would, as somebody who supported this campaign very strongly and does believe uh, in the grassroots act, uh, aspect of it, uh, it might not have been electorally uh, successful, but I do think there was something important to it. I do think I would like to be uh, engaged with and curious about how they can keep organizers going um, and maybe really specifically morph into something institutional. The most you know obvious thing to me seems like some type of pressure around Medicare for all. Uh, but it's, you know, it's sad, it's disappointing. I know people are going through a hell of a lot right now. Uh, the only other thing I'd add to that is I do think that tragically and by necessity, there is also a lot more room in politics right now. Uh, you know, I was somebody who never sort of, you know, I think things like strikes and protests and, you know, labor organizing is obviously incredibly important, but you don't want to kind of you know, uh, write checks you can't cash. 
in the last couple of weeks, things that have been not really on the table before are becoming much more relevant to politics. People are going on strike. People are doing a lot. Uh, horribly, because it's by necessity, because their physical lives are at risk working at an Amazon plant, as an example, or they can't pay their, you know, their rent. There's nothing to uh, romanticize about just how awful the material conditions are, but real changes are happening in 